Howdy, Yokes! Before we get started today, we just want to let you know that this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by our patrons. We want to build this thing to be as big as it can be. More episodes, merchandise, events, giveaways, you name it. And, well, they do name it. But we can't do it alone. If you enjoy this episode or any of our episodes, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. Check out some of the great reward tiers we've got set up over there. Or just make a donation of any kind. We want to keep this podcast free and available for everyone, and we want to make sure the episodes keep coming. If you have a couple bucks to spare, anything goes a long way. We could really use your help to make this podcast the best it can possibly be. Thank you for donating, and thank you even more for listening. Howdy, Yokes! Welcome back to Bacon and Eggs! I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Tyler Carlin. No, you're not. Oh, darn it. One day. It's your moniker. Yeah. I mean, the bitch hill. <laughs> and we've gone back all the way to 2017. In the dangerous underground crime rings of Atlanta. So grab your iPod video. And put your sunglasses on. Again. Because today we're bringing you... Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Uh, now, Ethan, this is a little out of the uh, the wheelhouse for us. Yeah, so normally we do... Um, Blockbusters. Yeah, what would you say? Just gigantic <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah, like the, the biggest, biggest possible of the big. movies. Movies that, like, this movie made $226.9 million worldwide, which is a, a good, good job for a $34 million movie. Yeah. But most movies we review have a $250 million budget. <laughs> and now you're understanding how movies work. <laughs> right. This paid for one of those movies. Right. This paid for one of those movies by Sony. Did you notice this was a Sony film? Eh, distributed. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's a working title. Is it? That's a production that a company. Oh. But it was released on June 28th, 2017. That was just about a year ago at 347 days ago. Excellent reviews, a 93 critic, 86 audience on Rotten Tomatoes, and an 86 on Metacritic. I'm with the critics on this one. Yeah, so you'd give this a 1 on a, bi- a binary scale? Yeah, definitely a 1 on a binary definitely scale. Definitely a 1, not a, not a 0. You would recommend this to a friend? I sure would. Fair enough. Uh, well, what is what does the critics say about it? I've got a negative review here from... From, uh, Adam Naiman of Cineaste Magazine. It was actually pretty hard. Cineaste. To, pretty hard to find uh, negative reviews of this movie that were well written. Um, <laughs> most people, it either Rotten Tomatoes listed as negative because it's like uh, six and that's negative apparently, or it uh, people are just like, I hate this movie because I hate it. Cars are stupid. Cars are awesome. <laughs> anyway, what's so the guy Adam Naiman says? It? Baby Driver is so poorly written on levels of plot, characterization, and especially dialogue that Wright's typically first-rate craftsmanship fails to save it, and in context, it even becomes its own source of annoyance. That's brutal. As we should have mentioned, this is an Edgar Wright movie. Before I just said the name of the director, as though we'd said it. Well, it is an Edgar Wright movie. It definitely. It is, is the second Edgar Wright movie we have reviewed, and very nearly the third. What? Because he, oh. he was supposed to do Ant Man. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. And then he quit like right when they started. I mean, thanks. So. He had to make Baby Driver. He didn't have to. He could have done I'm both of those he, things. I'm glad he did make Baby Driver. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have a review from John Bifus at Commercial Appeal from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he says Edgar Wright's Pedal to the Metal plus Needle to the Vinyl action movie is a love letter to the never obsolete wonders of fast cars, pop music, and crafty commercials slash personal filmmaking. Now that is a sentence. Yeah, that's a that's a love letter to this movie. 3.5 out of 4. Why are so by many the way, movies reviewed on a scale of zero, 0 to 4? I don't know, but 4 is a huge deal in this movie. The number 4? The number 4. Like, in what way? There's, like, the scene where Spacey is talking to the team. Bats can't figure out the number 4, like, the entire time. He's talking about there's four people in a car, there's only four letters in your name, uh, and then Bats is like, Bats is my real name, and he's like, there's only four letters in Leon, uh... It happens a bunch of times whenever Bats is on screen as they talk about the number four. Weird. Do you know yeah, why? I don't know why. I don't either. I like, But I, I thought it was really interesting. There's so many well shot and clever done scenes in this movie that it, like I catch something new every time I watch it, which I really like. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. So this movie's a little bit different for us as to what we normally do. This is, normally we're reviewing movies we think people have kind of already seen, trying to get the most people, the most possible listeners, because we review movies people have already seen, obviously, because they're huge blockbusters, everybody goes to it, they make 800, 900 million, you know, two and a half billion dollars worldwide. Right. This movie's a little bit different. know people have seen them. (laughs) Right. This movie's a little bit different, so this is a lot more in the wheelhouse that, that of movies that we've always talked about together, movies that we've always gone back to, and it's a relatively newer movie, so I know there are going to be some people out here that have not seen it. Uh, I, I can't express to you how much you should go I, find a DVD, rent it on Amazon, do something, go watch this movie. How did you watch it, Ethan? Uh, I watched it on DVD. Did you? Yeah, like not even Blu-ray, like DVD. 
Weird. Yeah. It's so retro of you. <laughs> my, uh, my girlfriend gave me the DVD of this movie for Christmas. Nice. I also, I think, got it for Christmas, but I couldn't find the disc, so I rented it uh, through whatever service my TV has. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So, yeah, this is like uh, one of two movies that I've, I guess, air quote, bought in the past, I don't know, five years. You don't buy movies? Like, on disc? No. Yeah. No, I don't. Where do you, where's your personal library of cinema? It's in my mind, Tyler. What? It's in my mind. How does that even work? I don't know. What's Scott Lang's daughter's name? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either, but now I'm kind of curious. <laughs> uh, it's, is it Haley? If it is, what will I give you? I don't know. It's not Haley. It's Cassie. Cassie. Why did I think Haley? Cassie Lang. Cassandra Lang. Cassandra. So, I don't even know where to start, man. This is so, like... This is one of those things where, like, I was like, we have to talk about this movie because I love it and we have to talk about it. Uh, Tell me about your first experience with this movie because mine was not as positive as I feel about it now. Yeah, I was very... I remember you telling me about your first experience with this movie. So, I was... I was sitting at Red Robin, right, in uh, in Newport News on the 4th of July. And I see, we're, we're going we're going to get dinner at Red Robin, and then we're going to go, Katie and I are going to go to Bush Gardens and watch fireworks, because it's the 4th of July. Um, and out the doors of Red Robin, I just see it pouring down rain. Nice. Uh, and I look at the forecast, and it's just going to do that for the rest of the night. I'm like, let me tell you where I don't want to be right now, is standing at Bush Gardens in the rain, maybe watching fireworks. Yeah, but probably not, because it's raining. <laughs> probably not, because it's raining. And so I was like, hey, would would you rather do something else? And Katie was like, oh, we should go see a movie. And there's there's nothing out, dude. Nothing. I would I, I had heard of this movie one time because one of my friends was like, hey, have you heard of this movie? And I was like, uh, no, it sounds cool. You know, I like movies about cars. I'd never watched the trailer or anything. And Katie was like, well, I want to go see this really depressing movie about something else. I can't even remember what it was called. And I was just like, man, I got to figure something out right now. Uh, so I was just like, hey, there's that other movie we can go see. Uh, you should watch the trailer and see if you want to see it. And she watched the trailer and then she was like, yo, let's go see that movie. And it was this movie. It's Baby Driver. Um, and it was awesome. You loved it? I did love it. I got out of the theater and texted you and said, go see it. And you were like, eh, I was unimpressed. I hadn't seen it yet. Had you I? had seen it. I don't think I had. I think you had told me to see it. By the way, in case you're curious, three days after that, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming came out in theater. Did it? July 7th, 2017. Huh. I don't know if it was out yet, but Dunkirk was also out in that time. Dunkirk was... Uh, I did not see Dunkirk. It was like... I don't, there was some reason... I do remember that, actually. There was some reason we couldn't go see... Like, it had already started playing for the last time for the night or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there were, like, no more showings. So... Gotcha. I kept missing Dunkirk for, for weeks. I would, like, go... Oh, I want to go see a movie. And it would be, like, done for the day. I still haven't seen it. I haven't either. I, I've heard it's excellent. It is the but... only Christopher Nolan movie I haven't seen. I don't know if that's the case for me. I think it is. Um, but, I, but yeah, my first time watching Baby Driver, I, a lot of people hyped it up to me because yeah, a lot of people know this about me. I love movies, right? I love a good action movie. Yeah, you love a good action movie. I love Edgar Wright. I love cars and I love music. And I don't, I don't have. I, I love at the time. I loved Kevin Spacey. I don't know. I'm gonna dis. I'm gonna dispute a sentence that you just said here. I would lay dollars to cents that when you saw this movie for the first time, you did not know Edgar Wright's name. But I knew Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, I don't think you made that connection. I definitely didn't. And I don't think it comes through very obviously in this movie. It comes through uh, in one scene very, very obviously. And I'm going to guess the scene with the cops, like with the with the pork chops. Oh, no. I was just going to say the opening credits. No, it's the pork chop scene because everything's synced to the music. Everything's synced that to the happens, music in the whole movie. Right, but it's real obvious in that scene. It's real obvious in the whole movie. It's such a good movie. We'll get... We'll get into the, the the like nitty gritty meat of the movie here in a minute. Let's but. Get down to the nitty gritty. So, do you so, play HQ? Say that again. Do you play HQ? What is HQ? HQ is the live mobile game show where you win money. No. Oh. What? I'm you so confused. Said you said nitty, nitty gritty, and that's how they start the show. Is the host is like, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Then he asks trivia questions. You'd love this game. You'd think it was the greatest. Probably. I'm very good at trivia. Ah, yeah, and you, you can win money doing it. That sounds like my thing. Yeah, but no, I don't play that game. Uh, I just said nitty gritty because it's a well known phrase. Yeah, well, obviously that's why he says it too. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not the first person. He's not the first person to, in the whole history of the universe to use that phrase. To use that phrase, Scott Rakowski. Whatever his name is. Scott Rakowski. That's a name right there. I think that's his last name. I'm gonna I'm not gonna get this wrong. Not when I have a Scott Rogowski. Rogowski. Rogowski, yep. When you have the Google machine right in front of you, there's, there's no, no need reason to ever no new reason to get anything wrong. Um let's see. So yeah, well, so what did you what did you think about this movie the first because you never finished that sentence? Yeah, so I I saw it and it was so hyped up because everybody, like I said, everybody was telling me, Ty, you're gonna love this movie. It's got cars, it's got it's got it's got heist, it's got it's well shot, it's you know, it's a good movie. Uh, you're going to like it. And it's got music. The soundtrack's sweet. And I saw it and I just like, I definitely didn't get it. Like I got, it's a heist movie and it's cool and it ends cool and like all of that. But I didn't get all the minutia of it the first time. And it was just like, 
yeah, that was uh, that was a movie. But I, I don't know, it felt like something was missing. I was so dissatisfied with John Hamm, uh, with his character's arc, and how that, that played out in terms of writing. That I Really? Was, I just wasn't in love with it. Yeah. That's so interesting. That being said, John Hamm might be one of my favorite actors ever. He might be the coolest guy in the whole world. He's definitely the coolest guy in the whole world. Yeah. There's zero doubt about that. Fair enough. I'm glad that you have decided to like the movie since you saw it for the first time. Well, yeah. So when I saw it again, I was able to... To, I think a lot of times with movies that have a bunch of music in them, like, this is the same experience I have with Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 and this is that like when I don't know the songs I almost feel like betrayed by myself like how could you not know all these obviously famous songs but I didn't know maybe a single song in this entire movie there was a couple that I recognized but they're not no I, by no means are any of them popular songs like particularly yeah I didn't even know the Queen song you never heard Brighton Rock I have now not wild yeah I was like and I'm like I like Queen so I was I was a little peeved with myself on that one yeah I mean the soundtrack um, is uh, I'm actually getting pulled up here right now because there's I, as am I we'll leave a link to the soundtrack because it's very very good um I definitely recommend you listen to there's it. two songs on here that I thought were really interesting and I can't remember what either one of them are right now even now looking at this soundtrack I had heard Radar Love which was on the radio in the movie so that makes sense oh yeah because it's got the it's got the song that they use to make jump around right in the beginning of the credit scene the like the sample there. What song? The, the, the Harlem Shuffle. Yeah, the thing. Egyptian reggae. With the, no, the Harlem Shuffle with the horn section. That's at the beginning of, uh, of House of Pain's Jump Around. I definitely did not put that together. <laughs> I did, uh, and it, and it's got that other song that they use for um. I can't remember what's called now for um Snoop Dogg. Uh, Smoke <laughs> every day song. Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, that one. The um, what's it called? The next the, the next episode. The Smokey Joe's La La. Yeah, the next episode is the name of that song. Yeah, the one you're thinking of. Yeah, it's because that one's in here too. Yes. The because and I, I didn't realize it was uh, and in both these times I didn't realize there were samples of other songs until those songs appeared in this soundtrack and i was just like that sounds familiar and then it changed yeah then it wasn't the same thing anymore oh it's called like uh what is it the edge by david mccallum huh mackalum okay if you say so <laughs> wait a minute blur like song two they had a they, blur they have a song on this album Blur has songs that aren't song two yeah wild a song on this soundtrack called intermission huh i'm learning so much young mc's got another song that's wild this is wild this is, I'm learning so much. Deborah by Beck, Deborah by, he says Trex. Trex. You mean T-Rex? You mean T-Rex? <laughs> well, okay, so on that, on that topic, let's dive into this movie a little bit. And I apologize, there's going to be some, like, because I did read the IMDb trivia, so there's going to be some, a little bit of me repeating IMDb trivia for this. That's okay. Because it was, um, it's, it's all very interesting. Okay, what can you tell me? So, for starters, that, that intro title sequence, right after the, the first chase sequence, the, the big, long one-hitter, where he goes to get yeah. coffee and comes back, uh, took 28 takes for them to get it right, and it was the first thing they shot, and essentially, uh, Edgar Wright was like, if we can't get this shot, then we're not doing the movie. Really? Yeah, and that's the whole, that's the why, why it reminded me of Scott Pilgrim is because the, the whole time it's got the lyrics from the song written all over the place as graffiti. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. Yeah, I was like that. Watching it for the second time, now that I knew it was Edgar Wright, I knew who Edgar Wright was, I was like, oh, that's that's his thing. It's got yeah, like things that are being were. said written on screen. I, I definitely did not catch that the first time I saw this movie. I don't think I got it until I watched it this time. And I was like, oh, look at that. Everything is everywhere. Yeah, no, and there's, there's so much subtlety. This is another great instance of that mise-en-scene just being so overly present to the point that it's almost a character. Yeah. I think that's super cool the way that he does that he takes like he, he plays really well with text like throughout the movie like things being written down like all the little soundtrack or the little uh tapes that he makes yeah they all have a name they all have names and they're like really interesting names like I, and i couldn't tell you what they are now but uh yeah really sorry really what the john ham that role was written for him and he's the only actor from the original table read to make it to the movie yeah yeah they only wanted john ham so uh, yeah let's start with characters okay we, give ourselves we can a, run those down give ourselves a basis here uh ansel elgort playing baby what's his what's his real name i can never miles miles yeah duh duh great he's driver great name a name for a driver yeah miles i love i love baby um I really, I love that he's, he's kind of like a friend of ours that, like, you can tell he consumes a lot of media and consumes a lot of, like, music and art, but you can also tell he's in no way a part of the culture of it or the community behind it. Whomst to, to whomst are you referring? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, no, because for sure. He, because he gets the iPods and uh, to some extent I'm under the impression that, like, it's just the stuff that was already on the iPods. You think that's what it is? Is like, he's just finding them and just listening to what's already there? Well, so... Uh, 
Ed, in this part of the IMDb trivia, Edgar Wright said that his intention was to put a scene in there somewhere where he talks about it, but that Baby is just picking up the iPods from cars he steals. Oh, that's why he has so many random sense. iPods and sunglasses, and why he has one that's like glittery and sparkly. But I think he also like plays them to his personality for sure. But I mean, I, I'm thinking that's probably how he come he finds the music. Yeah, because he doesn't when he's mixing music, he doesn't use a computer at all, so it wouldn't make any sense for him to be charging them. Right, and he clearly like, doesn't. He doesn't use a smartphone. He doesn't use like a you know an iPhone for his music. Right, it's like he's completely burners he's off the grid you know they, they barely even have a real television so like he, he's clearly not just sitting there on google like looking up new music right right and he only goes and picks out a song when it's like it was deborah right or it was baby baby was the song b-a-b-y yeah uh carla thomas and he goes to the record store and not like looking it up on itunes yeah he goes to the record store and buys a 45 of it is that what that is that what a 45 is the big one no it's the little one it's the little one. like one song in the front one song in the back oh i see I'm learning. A single is what what that's called. Gotcha. But then there's a returning cast of characters with with Doc, well, so, Deborah. Hang on. I'm, I'm, let's let me. What did you think about Baby's intro in this movie? The first time you see him, obviously it's the, the that song starts playing Bell Bottoms, uh, which is I no, I don't know if that's a song they wrote for the movie or what. Um, I don't think it is, but it's just like it fits the the title track or the the intro sequence so perfectly. Right. It was uh, by the John Spencer Blues Explosion. Explosion. Uh, it's not a thing I've ever even heard of. Just in case you. <laughs> Uh, no, it was, uh... And it looks like until Baby Driver, nobody had. It was released so. in 1994. Um. But yeah, so you see this this whole scene of him, like, banging on the <laughs> steering wheel and slapping the outside of the car and, like, turning on the windshield wipers and swaying back and forth with them. I think it shows, one, windshield wipers are not consistent among cars at all. So that's a cool attention to detail that, like, he knows this STI well enough that he can, like, dance along with the windshield right, wipers. Right, he knows what song is going to fit the beat of the windshield wipers. Yeah. Which so may be how cool. he picks the song for the drive. Who knows? <laughs> right. You can definitely tell there's a method to it. I thought that opening sequence was sweet. And it was very much, like, you can see his innocence in it. Yeah. But he, yeah, he's, and that, like, he's like a little kid in some levels. But then he's all business. The cop car drives by. Right. But you can but I'm see. The he's super uncomfortable with the guns yeah he doesn't like the guns at all um because he doesn't want anybody to get hurt because they explain it later but and that's can i can i tell you my one complaint about this movie? yeah go for it sometimes there's a few lines in there where i felt like the exposition was a little heavy-handed yeah i would agree with that but like like it was edgar wright was like okay we got this great movie this great story uh but then they explain like the tinnitus thing twice and like they go through the whole scene of you know it was, it was cool but they go through the whole scene of like kevin spacey doing the like explaining the job and he's got the headphones in and everything we hear is from baby's perspective. Is that what I understand? Yeah, and when, the, the when there's are out. right, anytime the headphones are out, it's got that vague ringing noise. Yeah. playing over it. Uh, so everything we hear is from yeah, from baby for the most part from from baby. Uh, and then like he explains the whole job, and then they go do the job, and it's just like a lot of times. I felt like, okay, I get it. This is what's happening. We're moving on. Which is great for my wife, who doesn't pick up on a lot of those cues, because she's usually, like, only half watching a movie. So that extra exposition is great for her. But for me, who was watching very intently, was like, okay, on to the next thing. But there, I mean, well, it was creative the way they did it. And what you just but. nailed is why the Ocean's movies are the best heist movies ever made. Because they don't do the exposition. No, because the ep- exposition is a voiceover to what is happening. Right. And it's a lie right. every time. Like, it's never, never what is actually happening. This is a better heist movie than any of the Ocean's movies. No, it's not. Maybe not a better heist movie, but this is a better movie. This is a better movie. It's not a better heist movie. Yeah. But that, yeah, this that's is... that's why is because you don't have to go because every heist movie has that like let's give a detailed outlay of the plan and then we're gonna watch them execute it. Right. And then and this this movie does fall into that. But yeah, I can definitely see what you mean. There's some scenes of exposition where I'm like, man, you just really smacked that. Right. Like, and we're on to the next thing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but let's talk about that returning cast of characters. So there's uh, Doc, played by Kevin Spacey, uh, Deborah, played by Lily James, Darling by Aiza Gonzalez, I guess so. Buddy by John Hamm, and uh, Baby by Ansel Elgort. Um, and is he not credited in here? Who? Jamie Foxx? Yeah. I wouldn't spray. He is. He's like down the Jamie Foxx is down at the bottom. Way down. Yeah. He's below Flea. What, Flea was in this? Yeah. Flea is. Um, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, he's the, I know who Flea is. He's the white dude in the second. Um, oh, he's the guy with no group. Nose. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, the, the I love the dude with the uh, with the uh, the Asian dude with the hat, the hate tattoo. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves hats. Everybody loves hats. <laughs> JD, JD. Yeah. Uh, that guy sucks. The character, no, the the character, the actor. He was just so unconvincing. Yeah, he kind of took me out of it a little bit. Lanny June. Yeah. Uh, I didn't... Uh, his death didn't look no, real. No. It was like that scene in Yes Man where they open the door and he's, like, laying on the couch. <laughs> like... <laughs> 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 You're so right. 
right. I never thought of that. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, let's let's run him down. Um, I love John Hamm. I do. I loved his arc in the story. I, I, I yeah, have no complaints he develops about that. very very well. Right, like he he's not even the the because there's no villain here really. I mean, there's there's Doc, I guess. No, John Hamm's a villain. He's not the villain. He's the, he's the antihero. No, uh, Jamie Fox is the antihero. Jamie yes. Fox is like I I do heists to i do drugs to fuel my heist problem <laughs> yeah you you do you rob to support a coke habit i do coke to support a robbery habit <laughs> right <laughs> he steals the gum <laughs> you think i'm gonna do <laughs> buy it <laughs> yeah, he just grab the whole thing and it, okay so i want to talk about john ham because then i want to talk about jamie fox because jamie fox's entrance in this movie is perfect um John Hamm, I love his character. He, but he has the tragedy happen where he loses his wife, girlfriend. Loses this is his wife. This is his wife. They are married. Okay, couldn't remember. Yeah, um, something he loves. Loses her. Yeah, his his thing that he cares about, and he takes revenge on the person whose fault he thinks it is. It is baby's fault. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like hundred percent. And then baby has yeah. an issue with that because somebody got hurt. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. that fight scene, the, like, Which fight the, scene? the one where the one where it's the three of them and she gets shot and he pops up. It's like the and, and that's where everything is, is so perfectly synced to the music. Yeah, it is. That I was like, ooh, ooh, that was nice because he's got every that every was... single gunshots happening on like a, a four beat. Right. And this whole movie, it, the whole movie happens the whole time, if, even from the beginning where he walks in with the coffee and they're there. He's slapping down the money on the table every other beat. Yeah. And it's like the syncopated rhythm. Yeah. Which is it's got to be it's got to be hard to like act like that. I wonder like. I bet what they did is they just blared the music. Yeah, they had to. Right. And then they just had the conversation, and then they go back and do the conversations in a studio. I don't know. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. That's what we do for music videos, which is wild. What? Just have the song, like, blaring at you, and you're, like, acting it out. Just play it, man. No one's that perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm wondering, is if they were just sitting there, because so that means they decided the soundtrack before they shot the movie then. Yeah, the songs had to have already been picked out. That's what I'm wondering, is, like, did they just shoot the movie to a click track, or... I don't know. I would... I, would, I, know, I wasn't in it. I, would, I know. I, I'm, I'm posing these questions these are things i would like to think about is i would i would love to know how they made this movie because everything is so or is it just clever editing i right hear kevin spacey's looking for work should we get him on the pod no we should not <laughs> no we should not look i get it guys it is a bad time to like kevin spacey here in america we understand like i'm not gonna make this movie apologize for it though no he's he's the way i see it is once the film has been made like I don't have to support directors who pay him in the future, but there was no way that anybody knew until right. it was all out. This is before anything and, happened. Well, not before anything happened. Before anything right. was before anything in the was open. brought to light. Like and, the movie's made, the they can't go is, unmake it. Right, and the way I see it is once once you're in it, you are just a like a colored paint in the brush of the film on the canvas that is the film. You know, like right. you, you add something or you take yeah, something. We're not away. we're not trying to apologize. I mean, we're not trying to like legitimize what Kevin Spacey did in any way whatsoever. But the movie stands with or without him. He, he, pretty freaking good in this movie no but i mean like nothing he can do they can't they can't undo the movie like right they, they can't go back and like reshoot those scenes right <laughs> i guess they could but they're not going to they're not, go they're not going to like that's that's ridiculous okay so i i love i love buddy and darling i love their story together uh i couldn't give less of a shit about Griff. John Bernthal? John Bernthal. The Punisher? Yeah. I hate that guy so much. Why do you hate that guy? Ah, he's just so annoying in every role he plays. Even this one. And I get his job like was to, him. like, be annoying in this movie. Like, he was he was supposed to be a jerk. Right. Like, even among thieves, they don't even like him. Right. He was only in it for the one heist, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he says the, the first heist. Yeah, he says the line. Uh, I'm just thinking through the movie. He says the line when he gets out of the elevator, if you don't see me again... It's because I'm dead. You think he died? I mean, he never comes back. It's true. Maybe he died. I don't know. Maybe he started being the Punisher. I guess. I don't know. But yeah, he, he slaps the sunglasses off baby's face. The baby pulls out another pair of sunglasses. And does it again. And that was the perfect amount of time to do that joke. Like three. What joke? The, the, the sunglasses thing. He puts three pairs of sunglasses on. If they'd done it one more time, it would have been heavy handed. Oh, yeah. Like he, I he's agree. got the sunglasses on. Griff takes them. He pulls out another pair. Griff slaps them off. And then Griff turns around. And he just pulls out another pair and sticks them on. I'm just like, <laughs> that was funny. It is fun. I, I really liked all the scenes. Like, I would pause the movie and be like, did you see that? That was so that cool. Was, that was so cool. Uh, what do you think of Deborah? L Lily James. I like Deborah. I think uh, it's a little manic pixie dream girl kind of thing. Really? You know, a little bit. In what way? He's like manic pixie dreams about her where she shows up in like a Cadillac or whatever. And they drive off into the sunset. Oh, just like meets this girl who's like, all I want to do is hop on interstate and drive and listen to tunes. And it's like, wow, you just met the perfect guy. He's a driver who listens to music. But I mean, I don't think it was stupid in any way. Isn't, I just think it was Isn't like, that the whole point of the manic pixie dream girl though, is that she isn't that? Like she doesn't no, end up being that? I don't know, man. What did, uh, who's the quintessential manic pixie dream girl? Ansel Elgort in Fault in Our Stars. <laughs> the manic pixie, <laughs> Ansel Elgort is the quintessential 
romantic pixie dream girl. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's Summer from 500 Days of Summer, Zoe Deschanel. Or Alaska. I'm looking for Alaska. Nah. I would say or, I would uh, say Margot from Paper Towns for Margot for Alaska. Yeah, definitely. But like Margo. in both of the in, in in both of those movies, John Green is very good with the Manic Pixie Dream Girl because they end up being completely reprehensible human beings. Yeah, they're awful. They're the worst humans. Yeah, and so that's why I'm I'm disagreeing with that because like I don't think she was the worst human. Also, she was originally supposed to be Emma Stone, and I'm glad oh, she that wasn't Emma Stone. I'm glad she's yeah. a nobody. Yeah, she was great though. I thought like she acted it super well. Yeah, and I mean I'm sure um, she's not a nobody. But, oh, she was Cinderella. L- she was the new Cinderella? Look at that. Yeah, you, she was also in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> you couldn't have paid me money. To say, did anybody see that movie? I don't think so. Cinderella, not Pride it, and Prejudice and Zombies. I'm, no, I'm sure no one saw Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> it looked decent, I guess. I don't know. It got a 45 on Metacritic. Uh-huh. That's Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Cinderella got a 67 Metascore, so that's probably pretty good, actually. Yeah, she looks exactly the same. Exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it. I don't know anybody that's seen it. I haven't either. Uh, Kate Blanchett is a stepmother. Uh... Helena Bonham Carter as the fairy godmother. Stellan Skarsgård as Grand Duke. This looks like a cast, man. Well, that's actually where it ends. Haley Atwell. <laughs> I've heard it's not that good. I do actually know a few people who've seen it. But, like, I, a lot of people haven't seen it. Also, Lily James's star meter ranking has dropped 25 points this week. Really? I wonder, wonder what happened. I don't know. She was in Burnt with Bradley Cooper. How many how many Bradley Cooper chef movies are there? What are you talking about? I don't know. That's the one. I'm thinking of... Uh, that's Aaron Eckert. Aaron Eckert from uh no reservations is that what it's called i think it's a different movie with him and Catherine zeta jones yeah i love that movie i'm sure it's terrible like i'm sure if i revisit it i would be like oh yeah this is not good but but i remember seeing it and then watching it again like later in life it's a very strange (laughs) i haven't seen it again no reservations it is i I, I, i'm I'm aware that it was no reservations i was i was very confident about that one Catherine zeta jones i don't know why i thought it was uh Who's the other girl from Batman? Uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Catherine Zeta-Jones isn't in Batman. I know, but Maggie Gyllenhaal is. You said the other girl from Batman. Well, the other person from Batman, because Aaron Eckert is in Batman. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's not Maggie Gyllenhaal. That was 2007. When was The Dark Knight? 2008. So he got off of no reservations and was like, you know what? I'm going to get half my face blown off. <laughs> yep, that's how it happens. <laughs> that's how it happens. So he called up Christopher Nolan and said, hey, can you blow my face up? Thank you. <laughs> take out a solid half of it. Yeah, I don't think that's how that happened. If I had to take a wild stab I'm pretty stab sure at it is. People who liked Dark Knight also liked Inception, Batman Begins, Dark Knight Rises, Shawshank, Fight Club, and Return of the King. Just in case you were curious what the top six closest to the Dark Knight movies are. Anyway, what were you talking about? Baby Driver? We're talking about, we're talking about uh, Lily James as Deborah. Deborah. Look like a zebra. Yeah, she's mad because there are no songs that have her name in it. Whatever. You know, it's like being named Tyler. Yeah, no songs have your name in it. None? I mean, not none. Can you think of one? I'm going to search it. Oh, gosh. It's going to come up with a lot of Tyler, the creator. Yep. Oh, there's a song by the by Miss Madison Beer called Tyler Durden. It's got four million plays. It's probably pretty decent. You say that. I don't know. I, I say it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> notice me senpai uh, notice me notice me <laughs> satan's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah on all of uh on all of spotify there are two songs that start with the word tyler what's the other one tyler by the toadies uh, that's probably your song right there that's only got three million plays who are the toadies <laughs> i've never heard of these guys i have no idea i've got an album called heretics <laughs> came out in 2015 <laughs> Is that where Tyler's from? No. Tyler's from the album... Uh, <laughs> the, oh, God. The Toadies... Rubberneck. The Toadies are an American rock band from Fort Worth, Texas, best known for the song Possum Kingdom. Yeah, that's from Rubberneck as well. 1994. Good year. Good vintage. Good vintage. <laughs> so the song Tyler by the Toadies is two years younger than you. Okay. I like Deborah. I don't, like... I felt so bad for her. Because, like, at the end, he's so right. He's like, you don't deserve this. You didn't ask for this. You shouldn't have ended up here. He's so right about that. Like, she's so sweet and innocent and perfect and, like, it's just mixed up with the wrong crowd, man. Well, that's what he did, was get mixed up with the wrong crowd. Because he stole a Mercedes. She served coffee. (laughs) He was, like, 14. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Stole a car. It's Grand Theft Auto, man. It's Grand Theft Auto. Jesus Christ. Stole the car of a drug lord or whatever he sells. Uh, They kept bringing, bringing it back to somebody has a nasal problem what is that cocaine oh so he sells coke he sells coke yeah and he robs people yeah pretty much interesting i that that was over my head the world of drugs is mind-blowing to me i I had lunch today with somebody who has five roommates can you imagine living with five other human beings that sounds terrible i cannot imagine that life all right so let's talk about bats bats 
Bats is perfect. I love Bats because he's... This is an Academy Award winning performance. I mean, it wasn't. But he it, is the turning point in this movie. As soon as you see Jamie Foxx on screen, you're immediately like, all right, that's where it gets f***ed. He's the gets problem. It gets super weird. He's the problem. Yeah. He's the one that, like, because up to this point, I feel like Baby has been with people on jobs. That care about that the plan. That care know about what the they're doing. They care about the, and know what they're doing. And they, they, they like, buy into the finesse of the job. Right. And, like, um, Buddy and, and Darling clearly give a shit about Baby. Like, they don't want to see him get hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, like, they're cool with Baby's, like, quirk. Yeah, and he gets out of the elevator and just goes, hey, next time Doc calls you, don't pick up. And he has to go. He has to, he has to pick up every time. Yeah, because he owes doc money did you think for one second that when he finished that last job he was done Not by any stretch of the imagination uh, yeah <laughs> we were like 45 minutes into the movie yeah oh uh, yeah bats when he comes on the screen jamie fox so jamie fox was on set for the entire filming of this movie really yeah like the whole time he was just like i, I, I read this in an interview or, or listened to an interview or something like that where he was like man i don't understand how other actors do it you want to be on set for the movie to do your parts you got to be on set for the movie you got to understand where you fit yeah i agree with 100% that. agree with that. i don't like i'm sure that if i became an actor i would fall right into the culture of what everybody else does because that's the kind of human i am but i would rather be like what jamie fox just said right <laughs> And I mean, Jamie Foxx consistently delivers really good performances, even if the movie is terrible. Yeah, or well, even in like horrible bosses, like <laughs> Jones. <laughs> because you, why do they call you that? <laughs> well, see, one night my mother was sleeping. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, no, I mean he he's a he's an Academy Award for best winning actor for Ray. Whatever I was trying to say, yeah, for Ray. That's a good one. Academy Award winner for best actor is what I was trying to say there. Do you know that Cher has a Grammy and an Oscar and some other big award? So she like she she could egot, huh? She could get she could egot. What what's that? It's from Thirty Rock. It's the 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 award where you you win an Oscar, a Grammy, or an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Oh, I see. Egot. Yeah, I didn't know she had won a, an Oscar. This was a Nick Cage movie. Female leading role. Oh, uh, Moonstruck? Yeah. Oh, great movie. Yeah, 1987. Yeah, Nick Cage has a wooden hand. Weird. She won Best at Actress for that? Yep. Wild. I did not know that. I don't know anything that was out in 1987, so I could not tell you. Oh, it's, it's a really good movie. Oh, that's nuts. Share. I mean, Eminem's got an Oscar. Does he really? Yeah, for a uh, best original song for 8 Mile. Mile, yeah. What? That's wild. But he doesn't have, like, a best actor. No, but it's still an Oscar. He's still got a statue. It is uh, Holly Hunter in Broadcast News, Sally Kirkland in Anna, Anna. Meryl Streep in Ironweed and Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction. I've only heard of one of those, and it was Fatal Attraction. I've heard of all those people, though. Holly Hunter, Sally Kirkland, Glenn Close, and Meryl Streep. Yep. What is with Sally Kirkland's face in this headshot? That looks totally normal now. But when it was little, it looked like she had no nose. Like Flea. Yeah, like Flea. Stupid character. Which, uh, I, that second heist, I was like, there's a Marine that cares? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I don't know. That's He's a Marine. I think that's some, some social commentary on the whole, uh, like, southern gun nut thing. But that, like, if you own a Ram 1500 and somebody's robbing a bank near you, you'll chase them down because yeah. you got a gun. Yeah, also, the truck they were driving was way cooler than that dude's Ram 1500. The Avalanche? Yeah. It's the only time a Chevy Avalanche has ever been cool yeah. in all of it's human history. It's not cool because it's not, the bed's not big enough in a crew cab Chevy Avalanche. Yeah, and it's, you can't put it's got the in weird, it. like, extendy part thing. Yeah. Oh, gosh, this is an ugly car. I mean, it's not as bad as the it Subaru does. Baja. Subaru Baja was a bad car and a bad truck all in one. It does, I'll tell you, the Avalanche looks decent in black. It does. The Subaru Baja is officially listed as a pickup truck. <laughs> Subaru Baja is a great vehicle. I buy Baja. Why? Subi Nation, baby. Look at that. Bring it back. Bring it back. Doesn't Marty McFly drive a Subaru Baja? He drives a Toyota. Hyundai's about to drop a truck about that size. No, but didn't they didn't they call it a Baja in the movie? In 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 Back to the Future? I don't know, but it's a Toyota. Is it a Toyota? Yeah. It's a Tacoma or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I think at that time it was just a truck. The 90s were an awful time for trucks. I'll tell you that. And cars. Yeah, everything was boring in the 90s. Yeah, it's a great time for movies. Well, it was a lawless what? wasteland for movies. Yeah, I mean, that was... Oh, God. Do you remember the, the, the Mustang of the 90s? Yeah. Oh, it's not God. as bad as the Camaro. I didn't even know there was a Camaro in the 90s. I guess they didn't stop making it. Yeah, they didn't ever really stop making them. No, I like the Camaro better. It's got at least, like, some box body elements to it. Well, not this one. <laughs> Which one are you looking at? <laughs> I just typed in 1995 Chevrolet Camaro, and it's, like, the bastardized offspring of, like, a Trans Am. Oh, God. It looks like a, a, like oh, a sweet Trans Am had a child with a Pontiac Sunfire. Oh, God, this is bad. But what did the 95 Mustang look like? Because that was a problem. I'll tell you what looked great was the uh, 2007 Subaru STI. 2006. Uh, with the 07 looked the same. So I'm just saying, it's an 06 that they used in this movie. 
is criminal that they took that car away from us after that first scene. I, I could watch a whole movie with that car. Him. It also has all-wheel drive in the movie, or rear-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive, which is not not a Subaru thing. Subaru, yeah. But, well, they uh, had to like whatever. They had to like completely take the computer system out of the Mercedes for them to do the stunts with it. Why? Because the the like course correction and stability control and traction control in the Mercedes are, is like too good that like to do that you can't stuff? do wheel spins in the Mercedes. It was not possible. Yeah, they definitely like you can't strip you can't down do turns like that. It was like they the car would just like turn. Is this is this the best car movie? The best car movie? Yeah. I haven't seen Logan Lucky. I've heard that's a good car I haven't seen Logan well. Lucky either, but that's definitely not the like movie that jumps to mind. No. Uh, I've heard it is very good and I need to watch it. I just haven't. Man Named Driver. Ryan Gosling was in Drive, but I don't think I've seen Drive. Honestly, I need to see more car movies. Uh, I mean, am I allowed to... Am I allowed to like Nick Cage movies on the podcast or not? You talk about Gone, Gone in 60, 60 seconds. seconds is a great movie. Is it better than Cars? Cars is not a car movie. It's definitely a car movie. It's about racing cars. Right. It's but it's like like okay, so it's you know, Talladega Nights the best car movie? No. Oh, it might no, be. No, that's not a car movie. That's a NASCAR movie. <laughs> Back to the Future is that a car yeah. movie? I don't know. It's probably Bullet Honestly, it's hard to beat Steve McQueen. That's what I've heard. I've never seen it, so uh, I have no idea. If you look up best car movies, it does list Bullet first. But also on the list is uh, The Blues Brothers. I know. I was just looking at I would not that. exactly call that a car movie. No, but it is a very good movie that has cars it in it. It is a very good movie that has cars in it. Smokey and the Bandit is a classic. It's uh, definitely not the best car movie, list. but Smokey and the Bandit is great. Burt, Burt Reynolds see. with that mustache in that 76 Trans Am. I don't think I've ever wanted a car more than I wanted a 76 Trans Am after I saw Smokey and the Bandit. Per Vulture.com. Com. I Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver is number one. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, the Scorsese film. Let me tell you about the the multiple ways that Vulture.com has been wrong. I hate that website. I've never been to this website. I have. They're the people that did that in like inane list of Billy Joel songs. No. Oh. <laughs> They're wrong about everything. They're like BuzzFeed for I like. Ah. Uh, they put Ricky Bobby as 25 on this list. Taxi Driver is not a car movie. I have never seen it. I've seen, what's the one with, uh, about the taxi with, uh, Robert De Niro? Taxi Driver. No, no, this is, uh, Sybil Shepard and Harvey Keitel and Peter Boyle. What? 1976. No, wait, you're right. Yeah, Robert De Niro. Are you talking to me? I'm the only one in here. That movie, Taxi Driver. Why is Robert De Niro not listed as a starring, a cast member? I guess, was he nobody then? What are you talking about? I'm looking at the star, like, this movie stars Where? these people. Amazon. Oh. Amazon's wrong. I can He's see that. He's listed number one on IMDb and Wikipedia. Okay. It's Taxi Driver as Harvey Keitel. Fun fact. Not Keitel. Oh, it's Keitel. It? Good he's the uh, he's the cop in um, National Treasure. Oh, I thought the tw 2004 film Taxi with Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon. I, I, that didn't make the list. <laughs> I hate you. I saw that movie. I saw that movie. I don't know. This is this is up there for car movies though. Is it the best car movie ever made? Probably not. But it's 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 a very good movie. Do you, can we? I know your feelings. I want to take an official stance. The Fast and the Furious movies. I love them. Are they good? I love them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Official stands of bacon and eggs is the Fast and the Furious movies are sick. Uh, yeah, they're awesome. And people are like, oh, they have stupid plots. I'm like, stop watching it for the plot. Yeah, it's definitely not about. Also, the plot. you can't it's tell me you you don't get emotional in every single movie. The family man. Yeah. When, when Dom busts in the first movie, and then and, and he's just like, Dom, why is the buster at this party? And Dom's like, because the buster kept me out of handcuffs. It's so good. I'm just good. like, oh, man, Vin Diesel. I think it's so funny. They uh they go all over the freaking place on the tomatometer, but they've only gotten better. Literally every movie per critics is better than the last. Fast and Furious movies? Yeah. Uh, it, They're not, though. Fast and Furious got a 29%. Furious 7 got an 80. The Furious 7 got an 80 because of the whole death thing. Oh. Oh, never mind. This is not. This is not in order. I'm sorry. Uh, the reason I said that is because I organized them that way. Uh, Furious Seven got an eighty. The most recent one being the Fate of the Furious. Yeah. Sixty six. I haven't seen uh, that one. I haven't either. I think the last one I saw was seven. I saw seven. Yeah. I've seen all of them except eight. Yeah. But after three, they're all the same movie. Like, th like one, two, and three, I can separate in my mind. Like one is the one where they lose the Jetta, and two is the one where they get the muscle cars, and three is the one with Tokyo Drift, and then the next four are all just one movie. The fours, four is the one where they're running drugs into Mexico or out of Mexico. Yeah, but like Han's in it, but the kid from <laughs> Tokyo Drift is not. So right, because it takes place all... before Tokyo Drift. Right. Every Everything takes place before Tokyo Drift, which apparently... No, no, 7 doesn't. No? No. It's, uh, chronological order is 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 3, 7. 8. 8, I think. I have no idea. Brian Earl Spilner. Typical white boy name. Who's Brian Earl Spinner? That's, uh, that's, um, Paul Walker's, uh, like, 
fake ID. Brian O'Connor. Yeah, yeah. That's what it like. His driver's license says is, is Brian Earl Spillner. Mm. I love those movies, man. They're so they're good. so good. Which one's your favorite? I love Tokyo Drift. I don't know that it's my favorite, but it's definitely the one that I know the best. Yeah, it's between three and four for me. I've only seen. Like, like I said, I've seen one, two, and three a ton, and I think I've seen the rest of them each once. Um, whichever one, I think they had like two chargers pulling a tank or something, or pulling like a, a safe, a bank safe. Vault. Yeah, that was cool. What was that? I think that was six. I want to say six. So as five well. was the first one that had the rock in it. I'm pretty sure he's not listed here. In what? Uh, but on just like the blurb of who's in it, but that he is in it. That's where Hobbs is introduced. Yeah, Fast Five, I'm pretty sure, had Hobbs. The Rock. Yeah, I like Hobbs. Whichever one where he, he has the cast on his arm and he just biceps out of yeah. it, that one was cool. He gives a dude the people's elbow through the table. Uh, right. <laughs> These are so wild. I like great movies. I mean, they're not. They're all terrible. I admit it, but I love them. Whatever. They lose a jet. No, the fourth one is is my favorite simply for one reason. And they're in the, they're in the impound yard and... <laughs> Uh, Dom, Dom and Brian are in the impound yard and Dom's like yeah you still owe me a 10 second car and Brian just busts the, w the window out of the first car he sees and goes here you go <laughs> I feel like a 10 second car in 2018 is a little easier to build I feel like you can buy a Dodge Charger or Challenger that goes ten, uh, can do it in 10 seconds can do a quarter mile in 10 seconds yeah I don't think so I'm certain a Dodge Demon can do it I mean, yeah, it's probably definitely easier now than it was in 2001. 9.65. Okay, but how expensive is that car? The SRT Demon? It's like $100,000, maybe. Why would you spend $100,000 on a Challenger? Have you not read about the Demon? No. Oh, oh it's cool. It's got skinny tires in the front, different from fat the tires Hellcat? in the back. Yeah, 840 horsepower. Jesus Christ. You can just buy it at, like, Pomoco Dodge. Uh, probably not. I mean, they can order it for yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> they, do, they do have a Challenger Hellcat just sitting in the, like, showroom. They're not cheap. Yeah, just ready to go with, like, a like a $78,000 price tag on it. $85,000. Well, it's $84,995, but then there is a, a $1 demon box that you can buy that's got more stuff to make you go faster. But they're required to sell it as an add-on, so it costs $1. <laughs> I do want a Challenger. You I do? do? Out of all the like new American I, muscle. I mean, I have one of them. So I, and, and, not Challengers, but of the new until American Until they make muscle. this new GTO <laughs> they keep talking about. Uh, Pontiac doesn't make cars. Yeah, they're going to re-release Pontiac just to make the GTO. Uh, it's a concept or whatever. Uh, of the modern muscle, I definitely prefer what I have the best. But I, th I do, like, the Challenger has grown on me a lot. Like, what, what if if we're going to list what you can buy for American muscle right now, what would you include? Um, like, just a Mustang, yeah, Challenger. Yeah, Mustang, Charger, Challenger, Camaro. Camaro. I guess the Continental? No. Well, yeah, but I mean, the Continental was always, like, included in that list. Let's see. Let's see if there's something I'm I'm forgetting. Oh, you could, you could throw a Corvette in there. Yeah, uh, I guess a Viper. Viper's not made. They stopped making the Viper. That's no. depressing. They did it for the uh, for the Demon. Ah, but yeah, like the Continental was always on that list. Um, I don't know. To me, I would I would stick with the Mustang because that's what I have now. And then, but I mean, so was probably... so was like the Impala. Like the Impala used to be a sick muscle car. Yeah. Let me tell you about the Impala I drive every day. It is not right. A sick that's what I'm saying. Car. It's like it it's very used slow. to be a sick <laughs> muscle car. Um, <laughs> And that's and they. It's actually not slower than my truck. My truck. They've is very brought slow. back or not my brought belt. back, but I guess they've kept making a lot of these cars so much they've just gone soft. Like the Dart. The Dart. You, I the like Dart the used Dart. to be a sweet car. They just never updated it. The Dart was cool because you could get you could get it for like ten grand and it had two point four liter engine. What do you mean they never updated it? The Dart. Yeah. Like. I'm talking about like the 65 Dart. Oh. The Dart was cool because they were super cheap and they had a 184 horsepower, which for a subcompact car is a ton. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've always they've and... always been small and inexpensive, but they used to be small and inexpensive, but they had room for a huge engine. So Yeah, well, 2.4 liters is big for a compact car. Again, I'm talking about in the 60s. I don't know what those look like. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, like they, they would come with like a 318, but they had room to go up to a 440 V8. That's a cool looking car. Yeah, it was like the Chevy Nova. Chevy's the worst. Dude, what I want is the new Bronco. If they ever actually make it, I just want a two-door SUV of any kind. Like, doesn't have to be a Bronco. I want the I want the 2024 Bronco to be real. I want the Rampage. Have you seen these? What is it? The Ram Rampage. It's a truck that the uh, tailgate is a double hinge, and you can drop it down so it's a ramp, so you can drive into the bed with your four wheeler <laughs> or your this is, or your. <laughs> this is so ugly. Is awesome. This is the <laughs> ugliest truck I've ever seen in my life. This is worse than the Honda Ridge doors. Line. It's got sliding doors, even. This is worse than the Honda Ridge Line. This is the best truck ever. Oh, uh, you know what I don't want? People always talk about this has a Fiat the Wrangler badge truck. on it. Yeah, Fiat owns Chrysler. No, but this has like a like a Fiat like emblem. You know what's ugly? It's the Wrangler truck. We're just talking about cars now. That's, well, a baby driver. All right, so let's talk about the movie. <laughs> we're, we're we're into this, aren't we? Oh gosh. Yeah. We've recorded for a long time.
Uh, yeah, so, so I love So what's your movie. favorite part of this movie? Uh, definitely not the dialogue definitely the action sequences like the heists um and if i had to pick a favorite heist i think it would probably be the last one um you know it's bigger it's more epic it's it's everything you want it to be um i think what the the, the best scene in the movie has got to be the last scene in the diner where it just like it's so tense and it doesn't stop. Yeah, I would agree with that. It like it just keeps going. Yeah, I would agree with that. And the cops show up, and they're like, "You got a bathroom key?" Which was stupid, but whatever. Uh, and like, is he gonna shoot him? Is he not? Is he gonna shoot him? Is he not? And the baby shoots him, and then I don't know. That, it to was, me, that was like it was super tense. And then the only thing I didn't like was the way they kill off. Uh, Buddy, where he just like drives off the side of the parking garage. What are you talking about? That is not how Buddy. No, dies. Well, how they how they air quote kill him off. Who dies driving off the side of the parking garage? Nobody. Somebody does. No, they don't. You know what I'm talking about? They push. Yeah, they push the charger off the side of the parking garage, and he gets out of the car. Oh, does he get out? Yeah, and then he deafens baby. I'm confused. He shoots the gun right next to his ears. Yeah, and then wait, didn't that happen before? I'm 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 missing something up. So what happens? How is does Buddy die? They get to. the... Um, so he shoots Baby's ears, and then he says, it's a shame you won't be able to hear her suffer, and then she hits him with a crowbar, and Baby shoots him in the knee, and he falls off the parking That's garage. it, okay, yeah, so he falls off, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. He doesn't yeah. drive off, the car drives off without him, and then he falls off following it. Into yeah. the car, yeah. I don't know, just something about that felt cheesy to me, to the point where I clearly really? can't even remember what happened. Yeah, I, I thought that was genius. I love that he's like, you took something away from me that I love. No, I liked that part, like, he I liked that part. He still won't kill Baby. Yeah, for sure, because he, the, the kid's innocent. Well, he I mean, he's still a good innocent. kid. Like, he drops the... Definitely killed Jamie Foxx. Like, he definitely did. Uh, yeah, well, he deserved it. <laughs> Bats was a psychopath. I mean, the whole thing with the yeah. cops, the, like, fake cops that, that were pretending to be gun runners, and he's just like, yeah, I well, smell pigs. I like to smoke my bake or smoke my pigs. That's what he says. Yeah, and then and he dies. Uh, but no, I mean, the, the moment where I started to really feel tense about it was when Baby realizes they've gone after, like, his apartment. They've gone after Joseph. Yeah, and that's when you know they're going to go after Deborah. Uh, Deborah. Yeah, so they're not afraid to, to mess around with his personal life to get him back in the job. Right. Well, they, they don't even want to get him back in the job at that point. They just want to kill him. Yeah, I, I guess. They think he's, like, a snitch or whatever. Yeah. Well, he's got, like, a very easy-to-find problem, right? Right. Like, the, the tapes are, like, a huge problem for... Yeah, it turns out, like, thieves don't like being recorded, believe it or yeah. not. What are the odds? <laughs> believe it or not. And that, I thought, was really stupid from the beginning. I was like, baby, why are you doing that? Yeah, it was a weird thing to include, the little songs. Oh, I liked it. I, I did, it too, cool, but it was but... just, like, it was an unnecessary problem to kind of write in right. there. Uh, what was your least favorite part of the movie? you have any criticisms? I would say just going back to, the like, the heavy-handed exposition. Uh, you know, something I think Edgar Wright does really well in Scott Pilgrim is like, telling the story with the with the media provided. Right. Without, like, you know, this is Kim Pine. She's the drummer. Right. But, like, he does it in, like, the style of a comic book with that yeah. one. Um, so it, it makes sense. Like, it comes together. Because comic books, I don't know if you've ever read comic books, are just made of exposition. Like, that's the only reason they ever talk is for exposition. Right. And then they just <laughs> pow, hit each other. Right. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't like the ending. Really? That he gets caught? Yeah. Um and the, the there's the theory going around that he is actually just dead. Oh, I don't think he's dead. And that that's just like his imagination at that point. B-A-B-Y. It's like he never he never makes it out of Atlanta. No, I don't think he dies. What's the theory? Can you explain that? Because I haven't yeah, heard that this. he dies and never makes it out of Atlanta. Like that, buddy just oh, shoots him. No, I don't think that happened. Okay, why? Because he makes it out and he goes right. But that none of that whole ending doesn't make any sense. What do you they mean would, it doesn't make sense? That would definitely have shot him. The you cops, think? yeah, hundred percent. I've played Grand Theft Auto, and this game, this movie, plays a lot like playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> But the cops are incredibly organized. That's actually one criticism I have with these movies, is that any police precinct is this organized, ever. <laughs> yeah, they can just mobilize, like, regular police officers. Right. Into, like, flying V shapes and yeah. everything. And everything's, like, exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like if you really want to just speed out of a city, you're not going to get caught in the city. Yeah, no, they're going to let you get to the out of town. Yeah. They're not going to let you. They're not going to be able to right. get They'll you. just set up a roadblock. It's like, it's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing is like, I think, and I, I don't like the ending for that reason. I, the, the, where, where he gets caught and like goes to jail and everything's like super cute and wrapped up nicely. I would have preferred him to just get killed. Honestly. Like if in the end they all die. Not, you don't even have to show it. It's just like, you show like just a scene of him hitting the gas pedal at the end and then roll credits. Well, there's like, I think it was cool how they did the character witnesses being like, you know, he was a good kid in the wrong world and you know, he was the nicest guy. He threw my knew purse and... back at me and said sorry about this right um but i don't like baby was innocent 
But I think once he kills bats, it's like you you did kill a guy. Yeah, but he killed a guy to the save other people died because of you. Yeah. Well, no, because he could have just driven off the way bats told him to. I guess you killed a guy because you have a problem with what you're right, doing. Right, but like bats would have come after him. Yeah, bats would absolutely come after. Yeah, him. he or he would have killed Deborah. Yeah. Once they figured out who she was. Right. Like bats was, was no, bats was nuts. Bats was nuts. What are the odds? That's the freaking diner they went to. Is the one his girlfriend? Oh, uh, about one to one. It's a movie. <laughs> yeah, one to one. It happened in the movie. <laughs> right. Like obviously, it would be super weird if they walked into a different diner. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. Or she just wasn't uh, working. Right. She gets off scot free completely. No, no problems with with Deborah. You look like a zebra. Do whatever she wants. She does look like a zebra. What a weird line. T Rex. Trex. Trex. Uh, I know. I really. I liked pretty much everything about it. It, Like it's hard to criticize. I, I will say the ending is unsatisfying it's like he goes to prison and then he's gonna get out it's like and she waits for him it's definitely like a romeo and juliet kind of thing yeah except for they both live but like the star-crossed lovers death instruction all that two houses both alike in dignity in fair verona where we lay our scene he, he's quoting romeo That's and juliet now line. is it yeah there's some freaking dialogue in that show in romeo and juliet yeah i don't know if i'd call it a show <laughs> no no in that play i guess in that script man named samson strong name do you think do you think bill shakespeare was a real guy i i personally love the theory that william shakespeare is just a bunch of people that's like my favorite conspiracy theory is that bill shakespeare's not real yeah well that that he was just a bunch of different like female writers Writing under a, a a collective male pseudonym. Oh, so you think? No, I don't. I don't believe it for a second. But it's a cool conspiracy theory. It is a cool. Conspiracy yeah, that that the Oxfordian theory. Because yeah, because women weren't allowed to write stuff or be in the theater. That a bunch of women just wrote scripts under the name of William Shakespeare and like hired a guy to play William Shakespeare. Mm. There's a lot of theories about Shakespeare. I don't know if you. There's knew a that. lot of them. Yeah, um, I mean, he's, he's been around for a long time. Yeah, he has. So, Nearly headless Nick was around his time. Period, yeah, right. Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Porpington. <laughs> so you you said at the beginning. Uh, you, well, your your thing that you were gonna read, your positive review, that the person you were gonna review from said that this was Edgar Wright's best movie. Do you agree with that? Let me see the whole filmography, and I will tell you if I agree with that. I don't know that I've seen enough Edgar Wright films to. Oh yeah. I've... Oh man, he's a screenwriter for Adventure of Tintin. That was a good movie. Did you know that he does not have a rotten film on Rotten Tomatoes? I believe it. Um, it's better than Shaun of the Dead. Better than Hot Fuzz. I haven't seen Grindhouse or Son of Rambo. Um, yeah, neither of those are better than this. Or Planet Terror. I've seen Scott Pilgrim. I haven't seen Paul Attack of the Block. I've seen Adventures of Tintin. Uh, never even heard of this. The World's End. 2013. 89%. Simon Pegg. Um, yeah, I think it is. I think. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I will 100% agree with that. Yeah, from what I've seen, it is the best. Now, there's a there's a good chunk of these I haven't seen. Yeah, but if we're talking about since uh, I just want to give you a little idea, since you didn't know who Working Title was, the production company that made this movie, uh, they have also made things like recently uh, Hail Caesar and uh, like uh, Le Mis and Tinker's Taylor Soldier Spy and Oh Brother Where Art Thou and a bunch of other stuff like that. Gotcha. So, as well as all of Edgar Wright's movies. Huh. And they make a bunch of. They make a bunch of dumb stuff, too, like the Ali G movies, but... Grimsby. The Big Lebowski. That's not... No, I know. I'm just saying they made the Big Lebowski. Oh. Fargo. And Johnny English. They made Theory of Everything. That was a good one. Eh. I mean, About Time. That Theory was Theory of Everything one. was okay at best. You didn't like Theory of it was Everything? okay at best. Oh, I loved it. Eh. This is very shocking to me. Eh. I'm over it. I'm over the, like, overly intense biopics. I think it's a biopic. It's not. I would never have thought biopic. Yeah, it is. Interesting. I don't know. Mo Wimbledon I'm I'm, uh, with Paul Bettany and Kirsten Dunst. Does he die in that movie? Who? Paul Bettany? Paul Bettany. Yeah. What are you talking about? Did you see my tweet the other no. day? I've seen two Paul Bettany films this year. He's died three times. Your move, Sean Bean. I, I don't think that's Your not move. like his thing. It is in 2018. Actually, he might die in pretty much everything. Wimbledon? I don't know. I haven't seen Wimbledon. <laughs> it looks like it's a tennis movie, and it looks very light. When did this movie come out? 2004. Uh, I have no idea. He wasn't quite Jarvis yet. I don't know anything about this movie. No. I I despise Kirsten Dunst. <gasps> I hear that from many folks. Why is that? Because she's just super annoying. Is she in uh, Melancholia? Maybe. Probably. Yeah. She's the, like the, the person. I don't know that I've seen Melancholia. Oh man, you're missing out. Whoa, that's a cool movie. Okay. You should watch okay. it. You're in for a treat. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Lars von Trier. All right, cool. What else do we want to say about this movie before we just do this I don't for know. the next I think, half hour? I, sorry. <laughs> I think uh, I want to do something different, Ethan. You know, we, we do this podcast. Well, are we, we talk done talking about, about the movies. movie? I don't know. Are we? Well, we're not moving on until we're done talking about like, the movie. So. Okay. Well, do you have any other la final thoughts on the film? That's what I just asked you. Oh, I do not have any final thoughts on the film. I really liked it. I think it's one of my favorite heist movies. It's one of my favorite movies in general. Um, I love, I think it's a great opportunity for Ansel Elgort to, to break out. I think that it's got very clever writing. Um, the action sequences are very cool. Um, it's really cool what they did on the budget that they had. Uh, and if it's the last Kevin Spacey movie I'm allowed to like, then I'm going to continue to <laughs> like it. <laughs>
<laughs> so what what in your opinion made it so good uh i think just how like how stylized it was like it's the kind of movie that takes a step past being just an entertaining story that uses film to like tell the story it it uses film as its own kind of canvas oh for sure for sure uh, it's an incredibly well shot know, well thought out well directed movie uh yeah i mean the right. dialogue isn't the best i've ever seen but honestly it, it could pretty much be like a silent film and get away with it right it's like and the story is told through everything they do, everything you see, everything you hear that isn't dialogue. Right. And they, they do waste some words, but there's also a plenty of scenes where they literally don't waste a word of dialogue. Where, like, everything said is, like, oh, that is there's so There's also cool. plenty of scenes where there's just nothing said. Like, the first time anybody talks in the movie is, like, nine minutes in. Yeah, when they're asking baby. Yeah, what he wants for something. coffee. Yeah, is the uh, guy at the bar. Coffee shop. Uh, but, sure. Yeah. Octane. Bar. Is that, is that a real coffee shop? I uh, doubt it. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been to Atlanta in a long time. I thought Atlanta yeah. was an interesting choice for the city. I have no idea. Is there any source material? I doubt it. I just think it's. I just think it's interesting. It's not a, a city you see all that often in movies. But it's like it's been recently that there's been a couple movies that take place in Atlanta. But I I don't think it's ever been robbed before. So I think that was a cool choice. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's something else I was going to say about it is... Uh, and also... I love I love when movies take place in not Hollywood or LA or New York or uh, Vegas. Yeah. Well, I just love when movies take place in a in a place too. Right. Like like a real... Right. When it's not just like any thing. town USA, not just generic yeah. city. And not just Smallville. Right. It's like they talk about picking the car up from the specific airport. Yeah. I, I really, really liked that. Yeah. I always like that in movies and it's been a, a thing recently that they're starting to do that more as opposed to, you know, I guess they're trying to get away from the whole Hollywood thing a little bit. And I hope they do. That's what made Marvel Comics so successful early on is that Spider-Man was in like New York, like places in New York, Queens. Yeah. He's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. In Queens. In Queens. Yes. Oh, so that was, that was cool. That was, I, I was reading about the history of comics and how you know, DC has like Metroville and Smallville and you know, stuff like that. And that's that's one of the things that set them apart. And I think this movie does that well. Yeah, I've um, always kind of hated that about yeah. DC. That, like, Batman lives in Gotham City, and it's a city that can be whatever it needs to be because it's not a real city. Right, right. It's like, does it have rivers? Sure, it's got rivers. Right, and it's like they filmed The Dark Knight in, like, Chicago and Pittsburgh and Toronto and, like, five other yeah. places to just string different really depressing cityscapes together. Yeah, the like dark and sad ones. Yeah, this was not a dark and sad movie, though, and I think that's that's what's fun about it is it is vibrant it uses a lot of color and it uses a lot of like culture almost yeah and it like it's like robberies happening during the day like it's in a world where like extreme robbery is pretty normal yeah it's a, it's a good old fashioned like western bank robbery like they just go in the bank with guns and get money out and then like yeah, leave like with in masks oh yeah. uh, the 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 mike myers masks the they were not able to get the rights to use the likeness from halloween which is why they used the mike really? myers is that why yeah. they did the yeah so they couldn't the production company could not get the rights to halloween so they called mike myers like the actor and was just like hey can we use can we use masks of your face from austin powers because they won't let us use michael myers and mike myers was like uh yeah obviously I'm movie irrelevant. Baby. I wish he wasn't. I loved those Austin Powers movies. Yeah, they were good. But then... Were they? No. I mean, they were terrible, but they were fun. <laughs> but then uh, then Daniel Craig became James Bond, and Austin Powers wasn't cool anymore. What, do you think? Because Michael Myers was like the, the Pierce Brosnan? No, it's just like Bond movies are a lot less uh, lighthearted than they used to be. Yeah, no, Daniel Craig Bond is, like, real serious. Yeah, like, Casino Royale was a good transition film, but ever since then, the Bond movies have just been, like, I'm gonna hit you over a sledgehammer of depression. Yeah. Well, they're just trying to be the Dark Knight. Yeah, That's all and, it is. And so, spy movies aren't, like, funny anymore. There's that one Melissa McCarthy one that was real good, Spy. But yeah, I mean, that's... A lot of people didn't like that either. Yeah. Really? I thought that was pretty well, like, established as, like, okay, this one was good. No, 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 no. Like, Melissa McCarthy people hated that movie. Yeah. Really? That was good, though. Yeah, it's, like, her only good movie. Um, I like the new one, the one that's in theaters right now. John Negroni hated it. Spy. I, mm -hmm. Did he really? I'm pretty sure. But, okay, so let's... Do you have, like, a rating for the movie? Like, a 1 out of 10? Yeah, it's, it's like, a 9. Yeah, it's, I'm with it's, you there. It's, like, a 9. There's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. A right. Spy is her highest rated movie at 94%. That's crazy. That's it, it is really good. I loved it. Like, I love Spy, but a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I've definitely heard people that were like, yeah, I hated that movie. So dumb. And I was like, that's, like, the least dumb thing she's ever done. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I'm looking at her list right now. She's in Bridesmaids. So that was a 90%. She was in Life of the Party. She was the, the lead. It was definitely, like, a popcorn comedy, but I, I never really enjoyed heard it. of it. I thought it was pretty. It's about, uh, like, mom goes back to college when her husband breaks up with her, like, dropping their daughter off her senior year, so she becomes, like, a college senior. Um, 
Is I what? So what do you mean by popcorn film? It's like, like you know you keep you keep that saying much. that, and I have no idea what you're talking about. It's just like uh, you go, you buy the popcorn, you buy the ticket, and you'll experience it while you're there. And then once you're gone, it's mm. it's over. You don't have to ever think about it again. It's you just you just go and you're entertained, and that's it. I don't go to a whole lot of those movies. I'll be really honest with you. Uh, yeah, you like, do. Phase Phase Two Marvel was pretty popcorn flicky phase two marvel yeah like the emo phase yeah i mean they, like i don't have to think about those movies anymore it, like popcorn flick doesn't have to be funny it just has to be like that's tell your oh, description yeah, that of it tells thing. me it's like fairly lighthearted. deadpool is like a popcorn film so yeah fairly lighthearted. yeah i would not describe any of the movies in phase two marvel as lighthearted, except for guardians and that was one I think about all the time. Excuse me. Anyway, I want to do something new on the show, Ethan. Can we do something sure. new? Cool. So I want we're gonna do is we're gonna call this like a uh, like a like a media check in. I'm gonna straight up steal it from Is This Adulting. They do a, a mental health check in, but we are not gonna get that deep on this show. So. <laughs> not too uh, deep. Not too deep. No. Uh, we're just gonna do like a media check in. We're gonna talk about what have you been listening to, what have you been watching, what you've been enjoying, uh, what did you watch that you haven't been enjoying? Uh, you know, are you reading anything you like? Are you just what are you consuming? Consuming and do you recommend anything? All right, so let's get me started here. Okay, do you want me to start, start with? Then? Yeah, give, give me a thing and I'll give you a thing and then. So one thing that some people closer to me know that I've started consuming is comic books. I never really read comics before. We've talked about it some on the pod, and I've started collecting the Spider-Man comics. I just got the first issue of number eight hundred today. Not like the first one printed, but like there's I think ten variant covers, and I got the first one that I will own. Does that make I have, sense? What do you say? No, I have no idea. Okay, so there's ten different covers of the same comic book. what comic book spider-man the amazing spider-man number 800 okay you didn't say that okay you said spider-man 800 the, Amaz- the amazing spider-man 800 i was thinking spider-man 800 was a different thing okay so there's yes yeah, so there's gonna be 10 variant covers and i got the the like standard one today like the doesn't say variant edition on it <laughs> so how do you the rest how do you of get the would. variant edition then um, I went to a comic book store in Charlottesville today and they like had a very limited book selection, like actual comic book selection. They had a bunch of the like anthologies and stuff. Uh, so they so only you have had no the idea. one, but there's have no idea, but there's a comic book store here in town that has mostly books and some anthology. So I'll check with them. They often have variant covers of things that I like, but mostly I have no idea. And I like I I don't want to buy any online if that makes any sense. Like I want to have to go to like a yeah. Place I mean to I always it. feel like collecting stuff by buying it online is kind of cheating. You know what I mean? Right. Like now that being said, if people send them to right, me, that's, that's different. different. I will gladly take. But it's those. like yeah, because you could just go buy every single issue on the internet uh, down to like episode like issue number thirty. Those early ones are not not the right. But to like acquire. you could you could knock a good deal out of it by just right like being like here's a hundred dollars, give me a hundred issues and right then, and that's kind of cheating yeah yeah that's definitely cheating so i like to go and and touch them and be like oh I, I like the cover on this one and it looks cool and it feels good and i like doing that and it's it's a very casual hobby but that's that's one thing i've been doing but what and i've been reading them on marvel unlimited and i love them uh, god Lady forbid Spider-Man. you open the book i would never i would never sit down and read a comic book that's absurd <laughs> don't understand <laughs> that makes no sense to me well for one thing i don't have them in any sort of chronological order yeah that's fair enough like the issues i have are <laughs> i do have 797 through 800 but i don't have like beyond that i have like 342 and like 290 <laughs> and like, random issues right so you couldn't piece any kind of story together because they're they're all right one one thousandth of a story right i don't from what i've gathered is that I could probably pick it up at any point and not be that confused, but yeah, I mean, you're kind of you kind of know how Spider Man works, right? <laughs> you got a pretty good background on Spider Man. They've made what seven movies, six, six movies, six, yeah, six whole uh, Spider Man. What, what's something I would recommend? I'm getting into comics. I would want. I would still want to know more about them. Um, so if if anybody out there wants to talk comics with me, I'm down for that. Ethan, what's something you've been? See, this is a really like weird time in my life for you to um kind of bring this up because I'm I'm sort of in my like I go through phases where I'm like, oh, I need to go back and like revisit some of my favorite content and I'm like right mm-hmm. there right now. So you bringing this up is kind of a strange time in my life cuz like I've literally like listened to the audiobooks for the seven Harry Potter books back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I think it's important that you say that. I think oftentimes when it comes to like people I respect and things, it's like they appreciate all of this media, but they never like I never know when people read it or watch it or do it. I mean, there's definitely movies that I love, like that I've seen one time and may never watch again. I've just got it. I've learned to accept that. But like, I'm not going to see every movie that I love a dozen times. Yeah. I, I'm very limited with my viewings of baby driver. I keep it low. I've seen it three times. Same. Um, and it's, it's very good every time. It's like, I, as some movies I watch over and over again and some movies, I'm just like, it's gotta be a special occasion, but I, is there I a, do like I do. There's some content that I just revisit all the time, and like the, the Harry Potter like books what? are one of those things. It's a lot of like I have a bad habit of of just kind of reading 
buying new books and new audiobooks and then just like listening and reading the same books over and over again and the, yeah getting a new book and then being like you know what American no. Gods was great I've listened to <laughs> I haven't listened to uh, Chamber of Secrets in a while we well the thing with Harry long. Potter is we started it for the book club we read uh, together um, Sorcerer's Stone Philosopher's Stone the number one book number one book the first right year yeah, one year one and I was just like I finished it and I was like uh, how do I stop because like and, the, and that's the thing with Harry Potter is like I'll just start it and then it's a, it's a thing like your whole world yeah, is consumed yeah, by it. Yeah, my whole world is consumed by it. And like last year, uh, I was at a particularly not busy time in my life, and it was like I, I went to work, and I didn't really have anything else going on. We didn't have the podcast yet. I didn't have the band yet, or we weren't doing stuff for the band or whatever. Um, maybe it was two years ago. I don't know. But I read, I listened to all seven audiobooks in like a week. It's tough. I uh, I was in the car for five hours this week, and I am behind you because I go with the book club, unlike somebody I know. So I'm reading Chamber of Secrets right now, which, by the way, if you'd like to join our book club, it's our, it's, our, it's part of our Discord server. Uh, it's $5 a month on Patreon. Uh, we love to have you there. There's a bunch of great people. Um, but we're reading Chamber of Secrets right now, and I was listening to that today, and I was, because I've separated them a little bit, like I read Sorcerer's Stone two months ago, and I'm reading Chamber of Secrets right now, I'm being reminded of how much I like Chamber of Secrets. And this is a new feeling for me, because I've always been like, I'm going to read the whole series, and then get so bored in, in Chamber yeah. of Secrets. But now I'm listening to it, and I'm like, yeah, this I mean, is... When you really exceptionally you, yeah good. you listen to you listen to Sorcerer's Stone and then Chamber of Secrets and you're like well this isn't quite as good and then Prisoner of Azkaban comes along and you're like what the f*** that last book right <laughs> because like from Prisoner of Azkaban they just particularly get better with each book they get more grown right up, more in depth like. You t- it tells you a lot more of the story each yeah. time, um, t- even to a fault. Like Order of the Phoenix is is way too long. Or, yeah, like Order of was, the Phoenix could have been accomplished to, uh, with two hundred less pages. I was talking to somebody who uh, owns a bookstore here in town, and they have a theory on what happened with the Harry Potter books is that the first one she went and like if you read it like it's a very entertaining book and there's no reason not to like it and the story all connects but it does make like first time book writer mistakes like small grammatical right. things that a, a younger editor wouldn't catch and stuff like that uh, and the first one came out and then it had some success and then she got a really good editor for books two and three and they're to the right length they're very clean they don't have a lot of like extra unnecessary plot and like everything connects really well and then at four she was just like nah screw you guys i'm gonna write whatever the crap i want and they become like bibles yeah they're huge they're just humongous <laughs> and uh they've got all of this extra text that you know is or is not needed and i think there's some some grounds to that theory because i mean she has more money than god now so she can write whatever she wants but but rowling is the kind of author who's like you know what i'm gonna make a website where i explain every question people have and if they want to know what serious black's third grade teacher's name was before he went to hogwarts they can find out and <laughs> so i thought that that was really interesting uh, just an interesting that is really interesting it. i i really i really appreciate that like thought process behind it because there's a lot of a lot of people that are like i hate this harry potter book for this reason and this one for this reason i like this one for this reason i'm like shut up They're just good. enjoy it like i get it if yeah. you just, if you just, just want to watch the movies and not read the books like that's fine do your thing if you just want to read the books and not watch the movies that's fine if you don't like harry potter whatever like shoot uh, yeah I, I don't I don't understand it. It's just such a such a great story from front to back. And so I'm in the middle of that right now. As far as new consumption, I know I've mentioned a couple times here, but I'm like right in the middle of watching Westworld, the TV show. Uh, yeah. It's truly an exceptional bit of television. Uh, and I can't I can't recommend it enough to people. It's just it's very, very compelling TV show from front to back. Each episode, they're very long episodes. Uh Take it or leave it. Uh, but it's not a super long season. It's only like 10 episodes a season. So it, it ends up being... How long are the episodes? Like 90 uh, minutes? Not quite. The first one, I think, was an hour and 15. And they've all been about an hour since then. See, that stresses me out. I can't watch Sherlock, which is only three episodes a season because it's so long. Yeah, I can definitely watch Sherlock. Like it's like, a, like Sherlock's a miniseries. Like, that's a lost art form. Oh, I, I, I get... They're so dense. Right. But it's like... It, it's, it's a good thing to me because you don't waste a lot of time on like... You don't waste as much time on setup and teardown for each episode. Like you, Yeah. Well, and that's like the opposite of the problem I'm having right now and I'll let you expand on it but with like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. which is what I just picked up there's like 20 episodes in a season and they're it's so cheesy and there's a lot of filler time and like they were just playing Battleship during an episode I was watching the other day like just playing right. Battleship and that's the thing with a lot of these like well crafted uh, non-network TV shows is there it's, and it's take it as you want it do do whatever you want with it it's, it's not better it's not worse it's just different it's like there isn't really filler it's designed right. they, they write the whole plot out and then just put segments in it yeah whereas the the 22 episode 
you know, half an hour TV shows are like, let's introduce a plot, have a, you know, a, a like resolution to this plot at the end of the episode, but we still move the main story forward a little bit. We're just going to eke it forward and yeah. And then we got to close the episode up. And I'm just like, you spend so much time, like, introduction, closing, introduction, closing. And I feel like that meme of the person lying on the ground being beat up with, like, seven baseball bats. And all those baseball bats are new (laughs) plots from each episode. (laughs) And even, like, I love Lost. Uh, I am a Lost apologist. Like, I defend the last three seasons of Lost like it's my job. Like, I was put on this earth to do that. Uh, And even then, I'm like, it's man, 45 minutes an episode for 22 episodes is a lot of content. A lot of season. Yeah. Like, those drag on forever. And you can knock five, six episodes out of each season easily without losing anything. Yeah. But it's that little bit of plot moving forward. Right. I, like, I just, yeah. I hate the concept of filler. Like, I don't have time for filler anymore. Like, I don't have time to, I don't either. to engage in media that requires filler. Well, speaking of media um, and moving on from TV, because I so we've we've opened that up. You're watching Westworld. I'm watching Agents of Shield. What are you listening to? What kind of music, music? Are you listening to right now? Uh, well, let me yeah. let me see what's in my Spotify recently. Actually, I'm curious. I'm gonna open this up real quick. Hang on a second. And then will you put together like a playlist? Yeah, we'll for absolutely people? put together a playlist of what I've been listening to. Um, well, Spotify just got an update. That's weird. Doing your phone? yeah. You don't have Spotify Not on your open. Computer? It would take forever for it to go rolling on on my computer. Uh, I've been listening to like I mean I'm in a pop punk band, so I listen to a lot of like that kind of music. And there's a lot of stuff for mm-hmm. that coming out right now uh, that I'm excited about. State Champs put out a new album on Friday, and I've never liked that band before, but they've put out four really good singles so far from this new album they're about to put out. So I'm super excited for that to come out on Friday. Uh, and anytime, like, I have trouble with new albums though. Like anytime a, a, a like a favorite band that I like puts out a new album, I'm kind of like I, I don't know these songs. I don't want to listen. I don't want to listen to them because I don't know them. <laughs> like I can't sing along with them. And it's, I know that's what stresses me out. Like I love singing along. Right. So it's like I and and a lot of bands that I really like and artists that I really like have put out some major trash in the past like six months. So I'm not I'm like nervous for that reason for some of my my upcoming artists. But like this band is a band I've never liked before and now I like. So I'm I'm curious to see. Like I'm excited for this album particularly for that. Do you have you listened to the new Dave Matthews Band album? Is it out? Yeah, it came out. I did not know that. It came out Friday, but whatever. Uh, that's that what when albums, albums come out. Come yeah. out? Uh, Movies Thursday. No, I, I've not listened to it and yet. Books um, Tuesdays. I was wholeheartedly unimpressed with the last Dave Matthews Band album. I've been unimpressed with every album since. There's Drew been Red one. King, so well, two now. Uh, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, so I've not listened to that yet. I will. I really like the new Post Malone album. I I, I know that that's like the popular like white boy 2K18 opinion. But it's cool. I listen to Little Dicky like. But it's yeah, my job, the new the so. new Post Malone <laughs> rips. Uh, hands down. Like the dude's got talent. He is a he is an ugly son of a <laughs> but he he can yeah I just he can sing it. He just got some really bad face tattoos. Like in addition to the really bad face tattoos he already has, he has uh, always tired written underneath his eyes. Now I believe it. That sounds like something yeah. you'd get. He has it's, that's like the thing. That's the millennial thing is to just be apathetic. Yeah, he's about got everything. stay away written over his right eye and then like barbed wire around his hairline and a dagger down the side of his face. Dude's got like. Like, yeah, like six face tattoos and wears Crocs. He is the anti-hero of, like, pop music. No, he's like the uber millennial. He's like a walking Instagram meme page. Yeah. It's like the millennials don't run like pop human. music. We haven't taken right. that over yet. Th- like th- We are now. <laughs> the guy's like Lil Dicky and, and Post Malone. Sounds like you just like white rappers. I do. I like a lot of white rappers. Um, uh, but I don't I don't listen to a lot of rap. So, like, but when I do listen to rap, I listen to mostly white rappers. Like, I love Eminem and those two and... Like Mac Miller and so have you have you listened dude? have you Hoodie listened Allen? to the new um, Dave Matthews Band album? No, not at all. No, I've heard uh, I've heard one song live twice. Is it Samurai Cop? But I've not listened to. It. Yeah, I like that song. And I don't remember liking it or disliking it. There's a song on this album called B K D K D K D K. No, B K D K D K D D. It's 27 seconds long. Weird. That's strange. Would you like to make a recommendation for something people should listen to? Um, I've been listening to so I just put together like a, a playlist that people can listen to full of a bunch of different things. My biggest recommendation probably would be the Baby Driver soundtrack because there's a bunch of really cool stuff on there. Okay, um, can you give me something outside of the movie we just watched? Well, that's like that's why I was recommending it. Uh, like, obviously, go. we've already said that. Go listen to Baby Driver soundtrack. It's incredible. It's good. Like, just outside of that. Something, a Tyler recommendation. Uh, Tyler recommendation. Earlier this week, I listened to again for the first time in many years songs about jane by maroon 5 the whole album it's a it's a and it's a really good album it was the last good maroon nah, 5 album nah. yeah and uh nah, um what is it won't be soon maroon before 5, long was really good i don't know what that is it won't be soon before long it was their second album it had um 
Hands up. It had, um, it had, what the hell was the name of the song? I don't know. I'm looking at it right now. I don't know any of these songs. I know. Uh, there was some, I don't know. It came out in like 2007 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. their last. It was Sounds their last song Jane. before they like turned into like a, just a regular pop band. And they didn't have that cool before they sound released anymore. "Move Like Jagger." Oh man, um, it had um oh it had uh, "Won't Go Home Without You," which is a really good song. Ah, but yeah, no. "Hands All Over" had "Misery." That was a good song. Eh. I remember liking that. I liked some songs. I also remember loving "Moves Like Jagger" because I was like, "Yo, this is that one band." And then I didn't know that they were gonna do that from now on. Yeah, and I was. I, I liked some happy. songs <laughs> on "Overexposed," uh, but if I never hear "Payphone" again, it's too soon. "Payphone." I thought that was like the greatest song. I did ever too, written. but. Now I, I never want to hear it again. Lucky Strike's a really good song. Uh, but anyway, I recommend listening to songs about Jane and just let yourself enjoy Maroon 5 again. It is a great album. It's got uh, This Love on it. It's got Harder to Breathe on it. It's got Sunday Morning with that riff. Yeah, go listen to... What, what, do, what do you recommend, Ethan? What do you think people should listen to? Not... The new album by Dance Gavin Dance. No, you're not a fan. Uh, a, it, this is a band, and I know that like pretty much nobody who listened to the show is, is gonna have listened to this band. Um, but they're like, really? I know what Dance Gavin Dance. Yeah, is. but do you? I mean, no, but like I've heard of that. Anyway, they're like kind of a big deal in the like indie underground scene right now. I say that with air quotes because they're you know playing like House of Blues type venues. Um, they're kind of a big deal, but like they release an album every year and they just keep getting worse every time. They put out a bunch of music. Holy yeah, crap. they just put out a new album on Friday and it's utter and complete garbage and my whole Twitter feed is filled with people just going like, oh my god, they just, they they are the best band. Like, they just save me every time. And I get that. Like, if, if, if that's your thing, like, I'm not taking that away from you. I just like, I literally do not get it. More so than I don't get it with any other band. But if I had to make a recommendation, um, I've... Let me see. What have I... What is the thing that I've been listening to most recently? Uh, you should go listen to the album called Old Bones by a band called Broadside from Richmond, Virginia. And they're, uh, like, like an up-and-coming band right now. And it's their first album, and their second one wasn't as good, but their first album was really good, and I listened to it, like, eight times this week for some reason. It just popped into my head. So go listen to that album. Good to know. You know what else I listened to recently? Uh, I imagine the Greatest Showman soundtrack. There's no way we're getting out of here without you talking about that. I wasn't I'm amazed. About that. I was going to talk about Want by 303. If they, the, we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of Want by 303, <laughs> and all I want in my life is a um 10th anniversary tour for that album i don't want to listen to the rest of their crap but that album so good if they could tour with cobra starship doing hot mess that I would, would be i would rather I hear need. viva la cobra i would also but hot mess means a lot to me but viva la cobra is better. i love i love want by 303 i cannot underestimate the impact that album has had on my life oh crap i just hit the play button on accident i hope it doesn't play I, actually you yeah you want brought that album back into my life for some reason recently you randomly texted me some <laughs> lyrics from it and i was just like oh well that's the thing i'm doing today <laughs> that's that's all I'm doing yep. this weekend. <laughs> I drove home from work that day, just like listening to three o three. I'm like, man, Did you roll your is, windows down. I still roll my windows crunk. down. This is crunk. This is crunk. This, I roll my windows. I put the top down now. That's how yeah, people oh, know. This guy. This guy listens to Open the to sunroof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy used to be cool in high school. Yeah. All right. Anything else we want to talk about for our media check-in? What, what, what have you been consuming? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, comic books, Harry Potter, and music. I've been consuming a lot of Broadway right now, actually, uh, which which will come through on the... Uh, I did not have anything from Greatest Showman on there, and I will not put anything on there because I haven't been listening to it. I'm amazed. Uh, I love the album. I do. And I, I, I'll, I'll definitively go on record to say what the best song from the album is since you brought it up why you brought it up it's the uh what? from now on the last song in the in the movie is the best by far you know what album anyway, I'm, uh, real quick um, you know what album i'm scared for yeah coming out the new panic of the disco what? uh i'm just pretending that the new songs aren't coming out and listening to pretty dot odd don't you hate pretty odd no i love all three first albums oh yeah yeah no vice of virtue is terrible i i, no, vice of I virtue sincerely wish it had never been written literally as time goes on they move on the spectrum from like awesome quirky punk band to pop trash and i just what I what are you talking about days. death of a bachelor is by far their best album but oh yeah it absolutely is absolutely is it is a remarkable record uh but these these new singles are just super they're cool but like there's nothing stand out about them at all so you remember when uh, miss jackson came out and you were like oh man this new like, record's gonna Whoa. be cool and then this is gospel came out and you're like yeah this new record's really gonna be cool then that record was just kind of like meh i like girls girls boys i like uh nicotine a lot uh, the songs are all right definitely the, the two singles were the best songs on the record by like a long margin yeah and and then death of a bachelor was pretty good death of a bachelor was remarkable oh it is better than a fever you can't sweat out yes no, it's it is. Not. 
but I, I'm really scared that this new Panic! Disco album is just going to be super boring. Like, it's not going to be as bad as the new Fall Out Boy album, but it's going to be close. There's a new Fall Out Mania? Boy album? Yeah, it came out earlier this year. Fall Out Boy, Fall Out Boy put out a bunch of stuff that I just don't even listen to. Did you know that? No. I've liked every Fall Out Boy album until this one. I think I've heard... Every song from Under the Cork Tree. Every song on Infinity on High. I didn't listen to the next album. The next album, Fully Ado, is my favorite album by Fall Out Boy. I know, America's like, Sweethearts. That's it's like one of my here. top ten albums. We owned it. Like the vinyl. We did. It's, it, hangs, you owned it. it hangs behind that my bed. It was on my wall. Nice. Uh, don't listen to the live albums. Save Rock and Roll. I knew every word on every song. We uh, we like premiered uh, my songs that what you did in the dark on WCNU as like a leak. Yeah. We did this whole album and it was like every song was like, holy crap, these are all good. Yeah, it's a really good album. And then American Beauty, American yeah. Psycho was all right. It's named after two really good movies. Yeah. So that's and good. then the new one's trash. I want to talk about this real quick. We uh, this week watched like a real movie for the first time in like six months, eight months or nine months. How, since, long, how long have we been doing Yeah, this? since October. <laughs> I was so blown away at how. Good oh yeah, we it gotta like. Oh, we gotta rank this. Yeah, we gotta get. We yeah. gotta get into the rankings. I don't even know if it's fair to put it in the rankings with everything else because I'm gonna feel bad what it's gonna do to some movies that. See, you get too overly attached to these like blockbusters. Is the problem that we've dealt with on this podcast the whole time we've been doing it? Is like you get personally offended when people don't like Star Wars as much as you. It's my podcast, so yeah, I'm allowed to. <laughs> you love are allowed Star to love Wars. Star Wars, but like they're just movies, like. It doesn't make you love them any less because we rate them lower. That being said, mm. uh, where does... Who's the villain? Bats? No. Uh, buddy? Do we have a villain? I think if this was a novel, it would be Baby Against Himself. That sounds like an Edgar Wright thing. Man. Nega Scott! That's how... Nega Scott. Uh, what's that called? Man versus uh, Self. Is that all it is? There's not, like, a name for that? No, there's, like, the conflicts. There's, like, man versus environment. Yeah. Man I, versus I God. That. Man versus Self. Hey. I'm pulling that out of my right now too like you're absolutely right though it's it's man against self is yeah no that just that pull that straight out of my ass. like that's that's what i would say but um and this wikipedia article cites fight club which i think is less of a man against self that's the like the quintessential like example no but the way the story is told is that it's it's narrator against tyler right like, but narrator it is comes tyler. out in the end that yeah it comes out in the end that the same person but uh, right but it definitely comes out in the end as a way in a way of like yeah you should have seen it coming even though no one did my girlfriend right. will tell you yeah i saw that coming she's lying okay so let me ask Ethan is this better than the Star Wars yeah. saga well okay then that that answers every question well, I, I'm sorry I do, do you disagree or um I think like this is sort of where I think the line gets muddy is that like I if you ask me right now what I'd rather watch this or the Force Awakens I would say the Force Awakens I would say this uh, all day like this is the kind of movie I like it's no lightsaber. that's fine <laughs> do I think it's a better movie yeah yeah this movie is almost perfect dollar for dollar it's very good it's very good but I would still feel wrong putting I it wouldn't. up there like I don't think it's I think it's more in the holy grail back to the future kind of category it's better than the original trilogy Star Wars it just is I'm gonna make a lot of hard calls over the next couple weeks that you're gonna disagree with I just know this I don't think I'm gonna. I'm not gonna feel that way. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna feel that way next week. Not gonna feel what way? Feel that it's the better than Star Wars. We'll see. I don't know. I I have a distinct like. There's a lot of movies I would rate above the the original trilogy Star Wars movies that I think you would not. Anything we've reviewed? Not so far. Other than Infinity War and Force Awakens. I'm honestly the more I think about it, the more I'm disagreeing with Infinity War. I'm not. I stand firm to that. Oh. Um, if anything, it goes higher. No, for me. it's not better than Force Awakens. I will never put it better than the Force. Awakens. Force Awakens. When we watched it again, I was like, "If you ask me right now, crap, what do I want to watch good. more between the Force Awakens and Infinity War?" I absolutely want to watch the Force Awakens. I do love Star Wars. We went through that whole thing, and I still haven't watched the Last Jedi since theaters. You should do that. It's really good. I think I own it. You should read American Gods. I also have been slowly, Fair, very, very slowly. slowly. <laughs> it's, it's not hours, that long. Man. It's a no, long it's time. It's gonna be like three days. What? Um, I'm in the car a lot. Yeah, so just listen to it. <laughs> Three days dedicated to one thing is a lot. Monday is podcast. Asking day. you as a friend. Then... <laughs> our it's logo like my is favorite sweet. book Have ever. Seen it? Have you seen Have. our logo? Where are we I rating this it. movie? <sighs> Number one. Are you sure? I mean, like, I think that the film critic way to do it is to say it's number one, but I think if you're asking me to rate it, it's in the six or so seven. So where, where would you put it? Just tell me, everything. tell me right now where you put it. I'd probably put it right above. Which Back is to the future. where? It'd be the new seven, right below Monty Python. Oh, I like this better than Monty Python. I, abs I don't think it means as much to me as Monty Python does. See, Monty Python doesn't really mean anything to me. Like, But I would accept putting it above Monty Python, but I wouldn't put it in front of our 
current top five. It's no, I'm sorry, and I and I will continue to come back to this. It is way better than Return of the Jedi. Return of okay. the Jedi is I, I insanely mean, yeah. highly rated in our yeah. ranking here. Yeah, I could I could see an argument for that, but I wouldn't put it above. I definitely wouldn't put it above Empire. Maybe a New Hope. I'll give you I'll give you the new five. Will that make you feel better? It will yeah. make me feel because even if I put it at one, it's not staying there. What do you have in mind that we're watching? Oh, I know. But I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, we'll put it as a new five. It is better than, because it is better than Return of the Jedi. It is a more complete movie. Also, I I think at the end of the year, the end of the year mark, we should go back and re-rate some of these. Yeah, and yeah. in October. Maybe not change the, the thing, but like do a brunch where we like talk about where it could go. Because I really think yeah. that Return of the Jedi is a mistake. I think Return of the Jedi is high. I think Black Panther is high. I Bla- think. Black Panther uh, has already not aged well for me. I would need to watch it again. But that's the thing is like, that. I saw it twice in theaters and i have no desire to see it again yeah like um, i i really just want to go watch thor ragnarok right now and i've already seen it I like know. six times I love it. it's so good thor ragnarok can always go higher honestly uh, uh, i think guardians is low i think guardians weirdly is enough low. i still think spider-man think, is low um, um man I mean, infinity war uh, really made one, me like dr that, strange's character that yeah, movie's that still movie's not still. that good um, other than that, yeah, I'm cool okay with everything best. in like the, the bottom the... half, like everything underneath Revenge of the Sith. Like, just leave it down there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if any of these I care about. No, Ant Man, I think is it's fine where it's at. It just keeps um, getting pushed down the list. Is it was yeah, like at one point problem. it was like seven. Yeah, uh, Winter Soldier, keep it down there. Yeah, Return of the Jedi is way too high, but we'll, we'll figure that out later on. Next week we're gonna be doing. And by next week, I mean we're, like, recording this in two days. But next week, we're going to be doing Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, which Tyler's never seen. I've never seen it. I, I mean, I know what, like, I'm pretty sure I've pieced together every scene. But I don't think. Oh, I've, I'm, I'm sure you have. Like, yeah, I, I've never sat down and been like, now I'm watching Indiana Jones. Well, that's the only Indiana Jones film we're doing. Yeah, is that correct? The next three. I know. I mean, I love, I love, I love the Last Crusade, the third one. I really do. But I have no desire to do another trilogy right now. Yeah, we may, be, we may go back I've, and revisit I've, them later. And I never want to talk about Crystal Skull. I don't even want to admit that it exists. I like it. It's just. It, because you've never seen the original ones. So? <laughs> it's Phantom Menace bad compared to the series. Um, I'm like, sure it is. Um, I will say there was something else I was going to add. I would be interested in... I don't know what I'm saying. I'd like to do more brunch. I want to I want to talk. I think that if you have an idea for us to do for a brunch, we'd be interested in hearing it. It's, it's kind of weird to come up with ideas for it, but we'd love to get back to doing those episodes. Uh, you know, the short like one offs and I'd be I'd be interested in, in hitting that again we, maybe maybe we could find a way to like, when we talked Harry Potter last week it came to my realization that like there's no way we're gonna get out of talking about Harry Potter on the show but, I don't want to go back into a series right now I really don't like no me neither I really want to we want to explore the movie world and, and you listeners if you haven't seen these movies we want we want you to watch them like we want to share this with you uh yeah oh we gotta give it a breakfast food a villain ranking we, yeah we did a, a an overall ranking we put it below a new yep, hope between a new hope and return of the jedi it's a new number five break that little party I'm, up. I'm waiting for the movie that is like obviously better than a new hope but obviously not as good as empire as i'm empire waiting for it back uh we'll see what star wars cooks up in 2020 um okay so we need a breakfast food i think there's definitely a black coffee element to this yeah like it might just be for black I, coffees. I, 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 I was actually going to say that. <laughs> yeah, because, because you know, it's, it's for one thing, it leans heavy on the number four, and there's a bunch of symbolism there. But it's also, like, the only thing they eat or drink yep. in the entire movie, except for the scene where they're at the restaurant. Well, even then, Baby's like, I don't really want food. Does he just feed yeah. her the whole time? You know, he had champagne one time, shortly after <laughs> discovering Bottle the stars. Cancer. <laughs> You're gonna make me weep over here, man. Is that movie sad? Fault in our stars. When Pappas was on the show, when Pappas was on the show, he said he wouldn't watch that movie. Stephen, if that's the case, please tell me why. Because I is I it because dearly, it's sad? Is it because you have a problem? I dearly with the love the Fault in Our Stars, both the book and the movie. Yeah, same. But it so is I'm sad. Curious. I'm not. I'm not sure how you could say it's not sad. I don't know. I I think I only saw the movie in theater. Um, See, so yeah, it's four black four coffees. Black it's a pretty easy Fair choice. Enough. Yeah. All right, give me a sign off. Uh, thank you for listening to Bacon and Eggs. We we love having you listening to us, and this is sort of a different direction for us, so please let us know what you think. You can do so in our Discord server, uh, which is $5 a month on Patreon, or you can join our Free for Everybody Facebook group, where we exist all the time. There's a link in the description. Or you can just tweet at us, at Bacon and Eggs 23 or me personally, at AmeriCarlin. That's America, R-L-I-N. Or at Ethan. He's at WowNow. Uh, the O's are zeros, but it's just WowNow. And that's Twitter and Instagram for both of us. 
Um, we really would love to know what you think and what you'd like to see from the show moving forward. We're not at a point where we don't have any ideas, but we're curious what you like and what you'd like to yeah, see if more. If you love of. it, let us know. If you hate it, let us know. If you are indifferent, let us know. And if you want us to do something different, let us know. And if you downloaded this episode, even though you haven't seen the movie, do you want to see the movie? Yeah, why are you listening? I mean, it's okay. We spoil movies. Yeah. That's what we do. Get it? Bacon and eggs. Spoiled eggs. <laughs> Note to self, leave uncomfortable silence. <laughs> <laughs> little production note there. Oh, uh, little little production note. Uh, uh, we love doing this. I have no idea what else I say. Oh, all of our artwork is done by Graphite. Uh, that is Vaishan's new brand. You can follow him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. Uh, we love all the work that he does, and we're super obsessed with him. So hashtag Potter and Family. Be sure to hit him up if you need anything. I think that's it. I think that's it. Is that's that going to be it. Thank you again for listening to this episode of Bacon and Eggs. I've been Ethan Edgehill. He's been Tyler Carlin. And until next week, Arrivederci. Ansel Elgort.